WHS 11's Travis Breeze was there watching it all unfold when Judge Larry Medlock slammed his gavel and sent Noel back to jail again. Travis? Doug and Shay, it was an emotional final ruling from Judge Medlock. He said he considered the definition of willful intent to disobey a court order, but he said it was Noel's ultimate responsibility to make sure that his bond conditions were upheld and no one else's responsibility. He said Noel is not above the law and he wanted him to have consequences for his actions. So let's go over what was this contempt of court violation. The violation was state police finding two semi-automatic handguns in his basement on March 13th after he was ordered to turn over all firearms except a shotgun. Noel's attorney, Jim Voiles, tried to argue it was an honest mistake and, then, or, and that Noel made every attempt to turn over all guns, but he and the two men who gathered up his guns just simply missed the two Smith & Weston semi-automatic pistols. State prosecutor Rick Hurdle said regardless, Noel had 125 days between the, his arrest and his bond conditions being set on November 9th and the search warrant on March 13th when he could have potentially, you know, done a once over on the home and made sure that every, all of the firearms were taken. And he said that the court should take note that Noel did not do that in those 125 days. So Judge Medlock sentenced Noel to 60 days in jail. We don't know right now if that's going to be at the Scott County Jail where um, Misty Noel was previously held, but Special Prosecutor Hurdle said uh, he knows it will not be the Clark County Jail. Uh, Mr. Hurdle also said he thinks that when Jamie gets out, he will have the same bond conditions. And we also said, are you sure that the trial will not be within 60 days? And he said, yes, it's everyone's understanding that the trial date will be longer than 60 days. For now, live in Jeffersonville, Travis Breeze, WHAS 11, on your side. The last few weeks, we've come to realize that this program probably needs to hear another voice, that the university as a whole has to have another voice giving guidance about this program that they hear. And the fans need to hear another voice. We've loved it here, but we think it's time for us to step away and step away completely from the program. There you have it this afternoon, John Calipari's Kentucky goodbye becoming official. This was sent out just after two o'clock this afternoon when the coach himself sent out that nearly four minute long video after 15 seasons, one NCAA championship and failing to make it out of the first round this year. John Calipari says it's time to step away as a Wildcat. It is a move that has been rocking the college basketball landscape ever since those first reports surfaced just a few days ago that the famous coach could be moving to Arkansas. Big question lingering. Is he heading to Arkansas? He never said that in his video. Sports director Kent Spencer is here following the late breaking Kentucky news. Kent. But he did say he has other opportunities that yes. he's currently discussing with his family and he still wants to coach. Word out of Arkansas is they'll make the official announcement tomorrow morning and they'll have an introductory news conference tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern time inside their basketball arena. Speaking of Bud Walton Arena, this picture from inside this afternoon was posted on social media by someone who covers the program. Feels pretty official. In Calipari's video this afternoon, he spoke about realizing over the last few weeks the program needed a new voice, but said Kentucky was his dream job, and he's loved it. We've made lifelong friends that we'll be close with the rest of our lives. And the fans, the BBN, all that you've done to build this program, the people that traveled with us, I want to thank you. Um, hopefully it was an experience with your kids that you can look at and say, man, this is something that we'll remember the rest of our lives together. Those memories and what we were able to do together is what this is all about. Again, it's been a dream what we've been able to do, but 15 years, time for another voice, and you know I'm always going to be a fan. 
Well, in a statement released on Twitter this afternoon, UK Athletics Director Mitch Barnhart thanked Calipari for the job he did on and off the court over those last 15 years and then added, quote, we are working diligently to hire a proven, highly dedicated coach who embraces the importance of this program to our fans and the state of Kentucky, end quote. Calipari's deal at Arkansas will reportedly be for five years, pay him about $8 million a year, plus jam-packed with incentives. Give us a list of realistic candidates for the Kentucky job. There are a lot of names out there, but who do you think it boils down to? Okay, I'm going to start with the realistic ones because we're not going to discuss Billy Donovan. We're not going to discuss Dan Hurley, UConn's coach. I think Mitch Barnhart starts with Baylor's Scott Drew. You know, that was a name that was kind of bantied about for the Louisville job a couple weeks ago. Um, Drew said, thanks, but no thanks. But Drew's name has been attached to Mitch Barnhart for the last few years. A couple years, they got the chance to get to know each other. So many people around the program said, the moment that John Calipari leaves Kentucky, that will be the new head basketball coach at Kentucky. It's Seems like that's going to be his first step. We'll see if that indeed plays out, and we'll see if actually Scott Drew was willing to leave Baylor. He's been there for about 20 years, won a national championship. You know, when you're dug in that deep, it's hard to pack up and move across the country. We'd have more fun in the news business if he hired Rick Patino again, but I guess that's not going to happen either. Okay. <laughs> we won't get you all started on that. All right, we'll switch to the weather. Something we can agree on. It's wet out there. Thank the stars that the eclipse wasn't today. We have soaking, drenching rains in the area. But uh, then they take a break. Get ready. The next few days are going to be spring green here in Kentuckiana. Let's check in now with meteorologist Colleen Peterson. Colleen, lots of rain on the way. Any flooding concerns just yet? Uh, we are looking at some river levels of the Ohio River. It is nearing a little bit high, and it looks high if you're driving along uh, River Drive. We are seeing some temperatures that are pretty mild in the 60s. But looking at that radar, there's multiple rounds of showers and storms. We have a front stalling out over us. So that low pressure is going to take its time as it moves over the state of Kentucky by Thursday. We'll get some better weather by the weekend, but really going to be off and on rain and storms here for the next few days. Looking at that radar right now, if you have any evening plans, it's pretty dry compared to what's in that forecast here in the coming days. We are tracking a few light sprinkles farther south around Bardstown and Hodgenville, but right now in Jefferson County, we're really not seeing too much. Maybe some light drizzles out there uh, for the next few hours. Gray skies, pretty overcast, not really seeing too much sunshine right now. We're at 62 degrees. Temperatures are going to have a hard time getting back to the 70s as we have those clouds keeping us a little bit on that cooler side. So over the next few hours, I think rain chances will stay around a 20 to 30 percent and even around nine o'clock tonight. So not going to see too much rain here throughout the rest of the evening, but we have more rounds of rain and storms on the way. This is that stationary front that's attached to that low pressure system. So we're going to see wave after wave. This is Wednesday afternoon going to be a washout and then another washout of a day is Thursday. We'll start to get better weather when that low pressure moves over us Thursday night through Friday morning. I'll time out when that rain will clear out coming up. Doug, Che. All right, Colleen, thank you. Tomorrow the city will gather to remember the five victims and countless others impacted from that old National Bank mass shooting. It's been now a full year since the devastating act of violence that happened in downtown Louisville. Tomorrow afternoon, Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg will be joined by Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir at Metro Hall, along with the CEO of Old National Bank and several others to honor the victims. And right now, you're also looking at the brand new memorials we found today outside of Preston Point. That was the former location of Old National Bank along East Main Street. The bank has since moved locations, but the memory of what happens will stay there forever, as you can see. WHS 11 will be streaming the service live on our website, whs11.com, and you'll see it right here on WHS 11. Well, one year ago on the Monday after Easter, countless lives were changed in Louisville. A gunman opened fire in a small conference room at a downtown bank, killing five co-workers, hurting six others before police arrived. Some of his co-workers survived by playing dead, including Dana Mitchell, who even with a gunshot wound in her back, stayed still, face into the floor, holding her breath until help arrived. Do you have any idea why that conference room, the people in it, were a target for the shooter? I don't know. I can't speak to what was in his mind. I guess it was a captive audience, um, so that was where the majority of the people were going to be, and, and he knew that. 
Tonight, more from our one-on-one -on -one interview with shooting survivor Dana Mitchell. Her reaction when she read the shooter's manifesto and what she remembers most about the co-workers she lost that day. That story airs tonight. You can see it right here on WHAS 11 News at 6. Right now, Kentucky lawmakers and Metro Council members have been visiting with the team of Louisville firefighters who aided in the miracle rescue over the Ohio River last month. You'll likely remember on March 1st when this happened, a pickup truck hit a stalled car, according to police on the 2nd Street Bridge, sending that Cisco semi truck right over the edge, hanging on over the Ohio River. Fortunately, the rescue team was able to pull the driver to safety with no major physical injuries. We've heard from day one that this was a huge team effort. You are the leaders that this state counts on. You are the ones that make Kentucky what it is. And when everyone else, after all was said and done, and everybody else went back to their dinner, everybody else went back to their families, your adrenaline kicked in when you realize, what did we just do? How did we do that? Can I do it better the next time? Each member, a part of the rescue team, was given a citation of recognition, thanking them for their work that day and every day that they have served our community.